Welcome to the deep dive. You know, sometimes the simplest things in English can actually be the trickiest. And today we're going to uh, dig into three of those little words. Do, does, and did. These are really interesting because uh, on the surface they seem so basic, right? But they're like these hidden powerhouses of English grammar. Yeah, exactly. And I think everyone, even if you've been speaking English for a long time, you probably have some little questions or uncertainties about when to use which one or, or how to use them correctly in different situations. Absolutely. And the cool thing is that once you understand how these words work, it really unlocks a lot of fluency and you can start to use them to express yourself in more subtle ways. Okay. I'm already intrigued. Yeah. So so where do we even begin with these? What's the I mean, I know do and does are for present tense and did is for past. But... Yeah. Yeah. And that's a good starting point, but there's so much more to it. Right. So let's uh let's think about it this way. Like imagine you're talking to someone and they say, I finished the project, but you're not quite sure if they really mean it. You know, maybe they're just saying that to sound good. Uh. So instead of just taking their word for it, you can use do to turn that statement into a question. You could say, do you really mean that you finished the project? Oh, that's interesting because you're not just asking, did you do it? But you're also kind of questioning their sincerity. Exactly. You're adding that extra layer of like, are you sure? Are you being honest with me? Right. And that's just one example of how these little words can change the entire meaning of a sentence. Okay. So so how do we know when to use do versus does? I mean, I know it has something to do with singular or plural. but Yeah, it's all about the subject of the sentence. Okay. So think of do as like the default setting, right? It's what you use with. I, you, we, they, or plural nouns like cats or books. Mm -hmm. But then when you're talking about he, she, or it, or singular nouns like the dog or the book, you got to switch to does. Got it. It's all about keeping that grammatical harmony. I see. So do is for the many and does soups in for the one. Exactly. You got it. Okay. But I have to admit, I've definitely made the mistake of like adding an extra S to the main verb when I use does, like saying, he does runs every day. What's the rule there? Ah, uh, yeah, that's a classic mistake. It's easy to get tripped up because we're so used to adding that S for a third person singular. Right. But the key is to remember that does already has that S sound built in. So the main verb just stays in its base form. So it's like does is already doing the heavy lifting there. Exactly. You can think of it as does is kind of possessive about that S sound, and it doesn't want to share the spotlight with another one. Okay. That's a funny way to remember it. So it's he does run or she does sing nice and clean. Okay. So we've talked about how to use do and does mm -hmm. and questions, but what about when we want to express the negative? Like saying that something is not true. Well, imagine you're at a party and someone offers you food you absolutely hate, right? Oh. Instead of just grimacing and suffering in silence, you can politely decline by saying, I do not like Brussels sprouts. Much better than just choking them down. Yeah. And by adding that not after do, you're creating a clear negative statement without being rude or confrontational. That's good to know because sometimes it's hard to be polite and direct in English. Right. And it's also important to remember that you can use do and does for emphasis, too. Oh, yeah. Like when you yeah. really want to make your point clear. Exactly. So let's say someone doubts you or questions your abilities. You could say, I do believe in myself, even if you don't. Oh, I see. It's like adding an exclamation point to your belief. Exactly. You're emphasizing your conviction and determination. Yeah. And that's something that these little words can do that's really powerful. It's amazing how much they can achieve without even carrying much meaning themselves, right? They're like little helpers. Yeah. They're the unsung heroes of English grammar. They work behind the scenes to add these layers of meaning and subtlety to our communication. It makes you realize that there's so much more to these words than meets the eye. Absolutely. And speaking of hidden depths, we haven't even touched on did yet, our time traveling verb. Oh, that's right. Did is going to take us on a journey to the past. I'm ready for some time travel. Me too. We'll explore all the fascinating ways did can be used to talk about past events in the next part of our deep dive. Sounds good. I'm excited to keep learning. Welcome back to our deep dive into do, does, and did. Now we're going to step into our time machine and explore the wonderful world of did. I'm ready to travel back in time. So I know did signals past tense, but is there anything else we should know about it? Oh, yeah. Did is a really versatile verb. It's not yeah. just about telling us that something happened in the past, but it also helps us uncover the truth about past events. Oh, that sounds intriguing. Like, imagine someone tells you, I sent you that important email, but you never got it right. 
Oh. So instead of just saying, well, I didn't get it, you can use did to politely challenge their statement. Hmm. You could say something like, did you send it to the correct address? Oh, that's a good one. So you're not directly accusing them of being wrong, yeah. but you're subtly implying that maybe something went amiss. Exactly. It's like you're giving them a chance to double check their facts without putting them on the defensive. Right. And it's much more polite than saying, are you sure you sent it? Exactly. And remember, when we're using did, the main verb always stays in its base form no matter what. Okay. So it's, did you send the email? Not did you send the email? Precisely. Okay, good to know, because I've definitely made that mistake before. It happens. It's easy to forget that did is already doing all the work of indicating the past tense. Right. It's like it's carrying all the weight of the past on its little shoulders. Exactly. And speaking of efficiency, did is also really handy for those snappy short answers we use in conversation. Oh, yeah. Like when someone asks, did you finish your homework? And you just say, yes, I did. Exactly. Instead of repeating the whole verb phrase, yes, I finished my homework, you can just use did as a shorthand. Right. It's much more natural and less repetitive. Exactly. It's like did is our way of acknowledging a past event without having to rehash all the details. I like it. It's efficient and to the point. Exactly. But there's another cool thing about did that people often overlook. It can actually be used to emphasize past actions. We really... I thought do and does were the emphasis words. They are. But did can also pack a punch when you really want to highlight that something happened in the past, especially if someone doesn't believe you. Okay. I need an example. So imagine you tell your friend that you ran a marathon. They're like, no way you didn't. You can be like, I did run the marathon. It was tough, but I crossed the finish line. Oh, I see. By emphasizing did, you're not just stating a fact, but you're also kind of proving them wrong. Exactly. You're asserting your accomplishment and refuting their doubt. That's awesome. Yeah. So it's like did is our secret weapon when people don't believe us. Exactly. It's a subtle way to add more weight to your statements and make your voice heard. I like it. But wait, there's more, right? I feel like we've only scratched the surface of did. Oh, you're right. There's so much more to explore. Like how did can be used in this cool technique called inversion to create more formal or poetic sentences yeah. or how it pops up in all sorts of idiomatic expressions that add color and personality to our language. Wow, did is like the Swiss army knife of verbs. It can do so much. It really is. And the best part is that we're just getting started. I can't wait to learn more. I'm ready to delve deeper into the world of did and all its amazing abilities. Welcome back to the deep dive. We're on the final leg of our journey exploring the fascinating world of do, does, and did. It's been quite an adventure. We've seen how these seemingly simple words can really add depth and nuance to your English. Yeah, I feel like I've learned so much already. But I also know there are still some tricky spots when it comes to using these verbs correctly. Oh, absolutely. Even for experienced English learners, do, does, and did can be tricky sometimes. So what are some common mistakes that people make? Well, one thing to watch out for is remembering that the main verb always stays in its base form after do, does, or did in negative sentences and questions. Oh yeah, like you can't say, I did not went to the store. Exactly, it has to be, I did not go to the store. That's a really common mistake. It's easy to get tripped up and add that ed ending because we're so used to conjugating verbs in the past tense. Right. And another area that can be confusing is tag questions. Oh, yeah, those little question tags at the end of sentences. Yeah, yeah, those can be tricky. Remember, if the main statement is positive, the tag question should be negative and vice versa. Okay, so it's like, you like pizza, don't you? Mm. But he doesn't like broccoli, does he? Exactly. You got it. Mastering tag questions can really help you sound more fluent and confident in your English. I agree. It's like a little secret code that shows you really understand the language. Right. It's all about those subtle nuances. Okay, are there any other traps we should watch out for? Well, another thing to keep in mind is the difference between formal and informal English. Oh, right. Like sometimes it's okay to be more casual, but other times you need to be more proper. Exactly. So in casual conversation, we often drop auxiliary verbs or use contractions. But in more formal settings, it's important to use the full grammatical forms. Can you give me an example? Sure. Imagine you're writing an email to a potential employer. Mm. You wouldn't say, you got my resume right. Uh. Instead, you'd say, did you receive my resume? Oh, right. That sounds much more professional and respectful. Exactly. So choosing the right level of formality is important depending on the situation. Good point. It's all about adapting your language to the context. Right. And remember, even native English speakers sometimes struggle with these verbs. So don't be too hard on yourself if you make a mistake. That's good to know. 
It makes me feel less alone in my struggles. Absolutely. Language learning is a journey, and everyone makes mistakes along the way. Hmm, I guess that's part of the fun. So what's the biggest takeaway from our deep dive into do, does, and did? Well, I think the main thing to remember is that these little words are more powerful than they seem. They can help you express yourself more clearly, add emphasis, ask questions, and even navigate different levels of formality. That's a great point. And the more you practice using them, the more natural and intuitive they'll become. Exactly. So keep exploring, keep experimenting, and keep having fun with the English language. That's great advice. Mm. So to all our deep divers out there, thanks for joining us on this deep dive into do, does, and did. I hope you've learned something new and that you feel more confident about using these verbs in your own English. And remember, the journey of language learning never ends. So keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep discovering the amazing power of words. Well said. Uh, Until next time, happy language learning.